As a creative technologist, you can make a massive impact on artistic expression by putting as much of the design in code as possible. By having our design as code, we can leverage bots to drive scalable end user experiences. In this video, we're gonna look at the coded elements of a sports team logo and how we can use that to create a dynamic style. Let's start by getting some context around our pipeline and the personas that we have at play. On the left side, we have a creative engineer and they're working with a bot to create some base coded classes that an end user will come in and configure in order to output the final artwork. So on the left side, we have creative engineering and on the right side, we have day-to-day -day production. Anytime we're working with bots, we want to establish some context, some intent. We want to be specific with our ask while leaving room for creative expression. Here I have my coded logo up on the stage as an independent layer. It has all the controls that we expect with opacity, blend modes, etc. By clicking on the brackets on the layer, I can see the code that was used to draw this image. And I also have my browser console up on the right in case I need to monitor any warnings or errors that occur. But let's start with the basics. Up here on the left, we have the position of the logo in the X direction. We have the position of the logo in the Y direction, and we have the overall scale. Adjusting any one of these values will reposition the logo as desired. So in this example, we're providing some settings to the end user with some simple positioning and scale. The next thing we're going to look at is this SVG render object, which was written by our bot. It's a one-time class creation, and you don't really have to know what's going on in here other than knowing that this class establishes intent with our bot, telling it what an SVG is and how to render it. So going back to the context of our pipeline, our SVG render object is here written by our bot under the supervision of our creative engineer and then distributed into our pipeline. And in this case, the creative engineer will also supply the SVG file of the actual logo itself which we can also see the code for down in the bottom of the file. So now that we have established our intent to render an SVG and provided the actual data of the SVG logo itself and having the end user telling us where we want to draw the logo, that leads us finally to our draw function. And so here we see the actual draw function where we create the logo and we draw it according to the positioning that is set here above. A little later, we're going to move a lot of this code to a global environment so that we can reuse it in multiple places. But first, let's just create an effect by duplicating this layer. And then we're going to change the color to just render as black. I'm going to shift it slightly to the right and down. And then reorder the layer to be a drop shadow. And then I'm going to take off a little bit of the opacity just to kind of give it a fade like that. So you can see on the right side, we have our normal like creative tools to do blend modes and layer orders and all that stuff. But if you dig down deep inside of it, this is the actual code that's rendering the layer itself. And so to top this off, I just want to give a light source to the upper left. So I'm going to import a preset gradient I'm going to turn its color to white and then I'm going to change its blend mode to an overlay. You can see that that kind of gives a specular effect in the upper left to suggest a light source. And then again, you can look at the code in here if you need to, but you can see how easy it was to just import and imply the gradient. So now that we have this all coded up, we have one last step. You may be thinking to yourself, what happens when I move one of the layers over? Yes, the shadow does not move with it. Plus, we don't necessarily want our end users having to go in and affect the parameters directly. So for this, we create controls. I'm going to add a new control and I'm going to use a slider with a 0 to 100% scale. I need to update my steps because I want to have very granular control. And I'm going to call this logo position X. And then that becomes the control right there with the slider. So then the next thing we need to do is update the code base to do two things. We're going to use the optic API to grab the control value that we have right now. 
and then we're going to convert that into a percentage based upon the width of the screen, and that gives us a zero to 100% scale right there. And then finally, we take this logo position X, and we replace that with the position that we were using earlier, and then when we click that, it moves it back into position. Finally, we take this and move this also into the shadow layer and do the same thing. We have the getting the position control, converting it to a percentage based on screen, and then we use that to draw where it's at. And then finally, then we can have our control to move it across the screen. You notice how that it did drop the shadow underneath vertically. This becomes your creative architecture decision as to whether or not you want to put in an offset variable over here that's fixed, or maybe you want to put it in the control over here to have the offset value be a control for the end user. It's a creative architecture decision at that point.